Hello all, thank you for joining me again today. Today, you're going to need your takeout boxes, so you'll want to make sure you've got these with you every Sunday. If you don't already have one, it's not a big deal. Just contact me at the church this week and we'll figure out a way to make sure you get one of these boxes. So, as you can maybe guess by our box, we are talking about candy all month long. And we're going to be using candy to talk about just how great God's love is. And so today, we're going to look at some chocolate. And chocolate is one of the greatest examples of how awesome God's love is. So this is why. So let's say you're having a bad day. Could be that things were frustrating or chaotic. Our world has been rather chaotic, so I imagine you don't have to go too far back to think of a bad day. Now, what did you do when you were feeling bad? Maybe you went for a bike ride, maybe you talked to your parents, maybe you took a nap. There's all sorts of things that people might do to feel better. One thing I like to do sometimes is just sit down and have some chocolate. And when you're having chocolate because it's a bad day, you need to just really savor. You can't just eat it super fast, just really enjoy it. Now, this is why I would say that this shows us just how great God's love is. So, chocolate comes from a plant. We know that God created this plant. Do you think it's an accident that God made a plant that tastes so delicious and that he made people smart enough and creative enough to figure out what they needed to do to make it just so wonderful? I don't think so. I am pretty sure that God made it that plant because he knew just how good it is and how we would all love it. So I think that is a pretty great God. So today we are going to be talking about creation. So we know that God created the chocolate, he made the people who figured it out, and we're gonna look a little bit more about that. So you're going to need to go into your boxes. And inside your boxes, you should find some starbursts. So when we look at the creation story, we're going to use our starbursts and we're going to be creative at the same time. So we're going to kind of make like a little modeling clay thing out of them. And it's really simple. All you really have to do is kind of mush it, but they're a little bit firm. So you might want to stick them in the microwave for like five to 10 seconds. So we're gonna hit pause and you're going to get, get your parents to put them in the microwave for five to 10 seconds and then come right back, okay? See you in five to 10 seconds. Okay, do you have your starbursts all warmed up? We're going to get started. So when you hear something in the creation story or you think of something that God created that you really love, I want you to create it with the starbursts and I'm going to do it with you. Okay, so we're going to listen and hear all about creation. In the beginning, there was God, just God, nothing else. No trees, no hummingbirds, no ants, no stars, no galaxies, no mountains, no whales, no bats, no kids, no grown-ups, no grandmas or grandpas, no caterpillars, no lakes, no oceans, no horses, no elephants, and no frogs. Not even little tiny ones, just God. You might think that he was lonely in all that nothingness, but God wasn't lonely because God wasn't alone. You see, God is like us in some ways. He thinks, he feels, he acts. But in other ways, he is very, very different. God is everywhere. He knows everything. He is never wrong, ever. And one other way God is different, and this one is tricky, God is more than one. There is one God, but there are three persons in God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one God. I told you it was tricky. And that is why God wasn't lonely, because he wasn't alone. There is love within God. There is friendship within God. There is family within God. One day, God decided he wanted to make a universe. He said, it's time for us to begin, and boom, he started making stuff. Why? Because it made him happy. God made shining stars and the big burning sun. He spun galaxies and solar systems and planets. 
Then he picked one particular planet and said, watch this. And boom, he made mountains and oceans and lakes and streams. He made plants grow, tiny little leafy ones smaller than a pebble and big giant ones that climb toward the sun. It was very good, but God wasn't done. Next, he made living creatures so small you could barely see them. And then fish and birds and giant dinosaurs. He made swimmy creatures and crawly creatures and creatures that fly. Whales and dolphins and giraffes, giant sloths and woolly mammoths. He made monkeys, little ones and big ones. Howling monkeys and swinging monkeys and monkeys so small they could sit in a teacup. It was very good, but God wasn't done. The creatures God made were amazing. Some were beautiful and others funny looking. Some were very tall and others very short. They had long necks and short necks, fur and feathers, big teeth and tiny beaks. But none of the creatures were like God. They couldn't think the way God thought, feel the way God felt, act the way God acted. And the friendship God had with himself, the forever friendship that had always been and will always be, these creatures couldn't join that friendship. They couldn't join God's family. So God said, now watch this. And then he made something truly special, a creature that could think, feel, and act like God could think, feel, and act. A creature that could join God's family. God made us. So I'm not sure what you guys created, but I had lots of fun working with our little clay here. And if you've made something awesome, I'd love for you to take a picture and put it on our Facebook page or something like that so that we can all see all the things that we have been creating. So this week, as you go about doing some of the activities that are in your box about creation, we want you to think about how what God has created shows his love for us. And all month long, we'll keep talking more about God's love. So have fun and try your best not to eat all the candy that's in the box because we're going to use it next week too.